Okay, this is a lesson on the Reverend Gary Davis chords. I guess it would be considered lesson number two. One of the distinct things about Reverend Gary Davis is his chords, which a lot of them are bitch to play, um, due to the fact that his hand was set improperly when he was a child, but it enabled him to use his thumb over the top of the fingerboard. He is a very thumb-heavy dude when it comes to the guitar. Uh, just like Jimi Hendrix. Um, so, as I said in the first lesson, if you're looking for tablature and that kind of stuff, Stefan Grossman, Ernie Hawkins, they have tons of great tab. But one of the problems is people try to learn right off that tab and they get bored or stuck or they get too focused on the individual notes. So, I think it's far better to actually learn the style, whether it's like in Hopkins, Blind Willow McTell, Mississippi John Hurt, any of those guys, they have a distinct style and it usually comes from the right hand, the picking hand. The picking hand is what makes this stuff happen. So, as I mentioned in the other lesson, there's five parameters to music. And you want to try to incorporate those from day one, from the get-go. I'm a classically trained musician and I learned a lot about how to sight read music and the great players and there's a lot of like say great jazz players and blues players that really play well but they can't read music and if they tried it just like screws them up so I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are trying to read this tab and you just get frustrated trying to play it note for note the five parameters you want to try to incorporate those in your practicing from day one they are rhythm rhythm is the most important thing without rhythm nothing moves through time. Pitch, obviously, that's the note. You stack the notes up, you get chords. Most people focus on the pitch. The pitch in an individual note is not as important as rhythm. There's also color. Color has to do with, if it's like say a clarinet or an oboe, or if you're playing back here or up here, it's gonna be a different sound. You wanna to try to vary that and be aware of that. There's volume. So many people just play at one level, just flat. And then there's articulation. Is it a slide? Is it a hammer-on? Is it a pull-off? This goes generally across any kind of music, orchestral music, but in the guitar, it's how you can really make the guitar special, make it sound more like real music. You don't really want to think about it, but you want to try to incorporate that when you're learning new chords. It just saves you time. Practice time is hard to come by. So you want to get the biggest bang for your bucks. And to not get frustrated, if you learn the style of these people and the chords, when you go to learn the song off of that great tablature, it'll be so much easier. And it gives you the ability to improvise off of the written tab, which is like a roadmap to get you to the right place. Once again, this is all my opinion. Take it with a grand soul. Reverend Gary Davis, thumb and finger, he wears picks. If you want to use two fingers, no picks, three fingers, whatever, two thumbs, that's totally up to you. But if you want it to sound like Davis, it's a thumb-heavy sound. 80-90% of the stuff he plays is with the thumb. Okay, so that said, I'm going to work on the key of G today, this lesson, because a lot of his stuff is in the key of G. And he has a mastery of the fingerboard by using inversions of chords. So, we take the standard G chord, okay? So, third fret, third fret, second fret. You want to use your little finger. That way, it enables you to walk down and play melody notes. Davis would never play this chord like this. He would use his thumb. Now, if you're not used to that, that can be a pitch, but it's something that you can work on because his thumb is usually riding that sixth string or the fifth string. So that's something to think about. The least amount of movement, when you watch his videos, his fingers don't even look like they're moving. It's very economical. So for example, if you were going to go to the E minor chord, your finger's already there on the B note, second fret of the fifth string very little movement and he'll cover because he had huge fingers sometimes two strings 
with one finger, but for us mortals, there's G using your thumb to do that. And what that enables you to do is to get into the G7 chord. So his big G7 chord is first string, first frets, your F. Sorry. The D is on the second string. Open G string. Then you bring your third finger down to get that F on the fourth string. And you have the B in the fifth string. So it's a big full G7 chord. And then he adds with his thumb the sixth string. Search my heart. That's the chord. But he very rarely plays that low G. He usually is pounding on the B. It's a bitch of a chord to play for me. So a lot of times I'll cheat and I won't get that low G until I really need it. Then I bring my thumb over to get those lower notes and I release when I'm going to play upper notes, okay? So that G7 chord, you're going to have to walk into it. It's one of the few chords that he really only plays in first position to my knowledge. Okay, so that's your big G7 chord. F on the first string, D on the second string, open G, F on the fourth string, B on the fifth string, and the low G. Okay, so we've got that G with the thumb. We've got the G7 chord. What gives Davis the mastery is he inverts the chords as he goes up the neck. So the F shape chord, which you should know, you move it up two frets, and you have the G. Now he probably covers two strings, fourth and fifth, with that one finger, the third finger, but the little finger is free to play melody notes. So he will take that F shaped chord and move it up two frets, you've got the G chord, and he'll move that all over the fingerboard. Okay? So if this is, say, first position G, then this G would be second position G. It's inverting the notes going up a little higher. The third is the bitch of all chords, and that's the classic Davis chord. It's the D shape with second, third, fourth fingers, and then you get the G, which is fifth fret, fourth string with your first finger. This is not an easy chord to play. So don't get frustrated if it takes you a long time. I suggest, and this is how I kind of got that chord down, you just make the D shape with those three fingers. Okay? As soon as you can get comfortable doing that, then you're going to take that chord and move it up to the 5th fret, and that's your G. He uses this chord all the time. So if you want to really sound like Davis and play a lot of his more complex synths, you got to get this chord down. Now you can cheat on this chord. So if you're playing in the key of G, you can use just the standard D fingering it up to 7th and 8th frets. The reason is you have the open D in your bass. He does that sometimes too. But in plenty of songs, Death Don't Have No Mercy, Samson, just name them, he's going to play that G chord. So, And the thing is he will slide into it. So you need to get that chord down. So however you walk into it or start working on it, don't get frustrated. An easy way that I found to do it is the two fingers, the middle two fingers. So if you're coming up to it, if you have these two fingers down, and then you put the outer two down. I do that, I think, when I play Death Don't Have Mercy. And you just got to work on that. So as with any new chord, once you get that shape, the way I suggest you learn the chord is you push all the strings down completely to get nice clean sound. 
then you lightly lift up so you're just barely touching the strings. It's like a muted string. And then that releases the tension in your hand. So it's like press, release. But your fingers never leave the string. That just builds up the, gets you familiar physical muscle motor memory. It builds up the little muscles that you're not used to using because your hand is stretched out as in that shape. So if you go, okay, so this is the chord. It could take a year. Could uh, it, you know? God knows how long it could take. It took me years to really get comfortable playing this chord. And if I don't play it for a, you know a couple of weeks, I gotta run over it again. Now. One of the important things, as I said, is to try to economize your practice time. So the Davis roll, which I showed in the first lesson, you want to use, when you're working on these chord shapes, use the Davis roll to help you. The Davis roll is, again, thumb, index, thumb, thumb, index, thumb. I messed that up. <laughs> thumb, index, thumb, thumb. Index, index, thumb, index. Okay? So, thumb, index, thumb, thumb, index, index, thumb, index. So, if you're playing even this shape, or this shape, and then we come up here. This way you're working on two aspects of his playing at the same time. The roll and getting to be able to move from one inversion of the G chord to another. So as you get comfortable with this guy, the next one is revoicing up here. Okay? So this G shape is the next inversion of that shape. So it's really the C chord shape, but you're only fretting using two fingers so that your little finger up here can play melody notes. So that shape is 10th fret, 8th fret, 7th fret, 9th fret. Roll. So you want to be able to go from that G to that G to that G. I would practice moving from one of those chords to the next. You can pinch like I just did. Put in the Davis roll. Whatever. But you want to get familiar with that. The next G would be up here which is like your long A, except you're all the way up here. And usually when he's doing that, he does that signature lick, which is... And that lick he will do all over. If it's the key of C. So he usually doesn't go much higher than that as far as G chords, except for he might go up there. He uses the entire fingerboard. And that's what you want to learn to do, to be able to go from first position, second position, to third, to fourth, to fifth. Okay? So the only other thing pertaining to the key of G in particular is that turnaround. So the key of G turnaround, many of you might know it, but it's G, G seventh. flat 7 to G. So the key here is that you're walking down on the 4th string. So if you take the 2nd position G, that's like your open string. C, and it resolves to the G. 
So you want to work on that turnaround. It's in a thousand tunes. A lot of blues guys use it. There's various ways you can pick that. But... I screwed that up. That's the Davis roll with the turnaround. If I make a mistake, you just just like when you're playing live, you just you just move forward because rhythm is the most important thing. So you can do it. So you want to learn his G chords, incorporate the roll, the Davis roll, and just get these bad boys down. This one, that's going to be the bitch, okay? Don't beat yourself up. If you can't, you know, you want to work on it, but if it's going to hold you back from playing one of his tunes, just use the three finger and you got the open D. But what he'll do is he will get counter melody lines on the fourth string or inner strings. Davis is about counterpoint. A lot of his tunes have, like, moving lines. It's not really about... The alternating bass. It's about these really cool counterpoint lines or walking lines, bass lines. That's what makes him special. So, with that said, here's the D chord. The big Davis D chord is like a C shape, except you're not using your first finger. And then when you move it up two frets, you gotta cop the top three strings and that D chord comes to the G so he will use this all the time so right there is an example of him going from that G to this G there's the D second position G down, G, 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 G. Okay, so there's a little tidbit of a tune, but to learn those chords first will help you tremendously to learn his songs. But you want to use the five parameters again. So, for example, if we're doing this chord, the bitch, lay it out, make it big, then make it quiet. So that when you're making these chord changes, that it's more interesting to you. Okay, so eventually you're going to get where you slide into them. If you want to, or if it calls for the tune. But anything you can do to keep you interested in the mundane tax, task of learning these chords, go for it. Alright, I'm looking at the clock here, it's about 18 minutes, if I held your attention that long, God bless. That's the big D7th chord, which I will go into in the next lesson, so that I'll break these up. That's the big dominant 7th chord, that resolves, there's your G, so that's your D7th there, and then you have another revoicing, revoicing of the D there. Alright, so enjoy. God bless the Reverend.